deal with uh, you know large institutional clients like asset management companies insurance companies uh, banks foreign institutional investors who are now known as fpis foreign portfolio investors so these are the players that we uh, deal in and uh, the the transaction sizes are also very large we'll do anything between 10 20 25 crores 50 crores 100 crores again depending on you know what kind of instrument that we deal in under fixed income there are lot many instruments that are available on the markets you got uh, bonds which could be uh, with a maturity of anywhere between 1 year to 50 years so again uh, why 1 year to 50 years because it caters to different kinds of demand from different investors an insurance company might want something with a uh, you know longer duration and an asset management company might want something with a very shorter duration or a fii can come in and say that look i only want a 3 year paper that way. and you have uh, commercial papers which are basically used by corporates uh, to raise short term money for their working capital that would be anywhere between say 30 days to 1 year kind of so on on commercial papers you can see volumes going very high it can go up to uh, you know on on a, on a daily basis 3000 4000 crores can can get transacted on that so because they are shorter uh, maturity papers so the volume remains higher on that longer maturity papers volume will drop a little bit bonds are traded on a daily basis and uh, india has uh, one of the most um, i would say state of the art uh, dealing uh, screen for dealing in government securities um, i i think uh, uh, it, it's comparable to uh bond dealing desks of the us or other larger uh, you know uh, the uh, countries that have got a more vibrant bond market so if you look at statistics uh, bond markets across the world are basically 3 to 4 times the equity markets and if you look at india equity market is larger than the and then our bond markets so what we are seeing right now is that the bond markets have still not uh blossomed in our country it's we've been talking about uh, the uh, the bond market is blossoming for the last 10 years more than a decade but nothing's really been happening but uh, yeah i think uh, we are really uh, very much on the cusp wherein we should really be seeing the fixed income bond markets uh, take off over the next 5 years but uh, we are slowly slowly moving towards that yeah. status and uh, what we haven't allowed till now is we haven't allowed our bonds to get traded in the overseas markets our government securities so that is uh, something that's coming up very soon once that happens i think we are going to see much more um, volumes coming in much more uh, people wanting to trade in these markets i started my career into equity markets as an equity research analyst and um, thereafter uh, the company that i was working in they also had a debt market wing and you know i used to sit and uh, look at them trade on that uh, markets this is a long time back i'm talking about close to 22 23 years ago so that time also uh, the the debt markets were really not so developed as what they are developed today and i like the way that trading was happening on those days uh, since i manage a, a, a large amount of funds uh, close to about 800 odd crores generally i am in office by about quarter to 9 9 uh, that's when uh, the, the markets open at night we always have one uh, meet in the morning to try and understand what is going to be the plan of action for the day so the investment committee of which i am of course a part of we decide whether we need to do any churning or not or you know there is some strategic uh, uh, transactions to be done now other than that thereafter it is left to uh, my discretion as to uh, how the market moves so there there is certain amount of money that i can always use to uh, trade on the markets so as the markets open up we start seeing the prices coming up we i i i can start to buy and sell whatever makes sense to me or whatever i i feel that is good at that point of time and this is more during the uh, first couple of hours where the market is really very active and then during the day it tapers off a bit uh, and thereafter i think uh, afternoon onwards i have a lot of meetings coming up 
with clients, somebody coming to meet me or I have to go and catch up with somebody. Uh, we have uh, on a regular basis our internal uh, committee meetings within the company uh, with the board. So that is very important. So most of the time my work time goes there, frankly. By the time you know I get through all that, it's evening. The pros of the job is uh, that well, I get to live a little, a little bit longer than equity guys. And uh, very seriously, it is something that helps you really understand the entire economy of a country. You know, it, it, it is not uh, a very easy to say that oh, we are doing some buying selling on government securities. So you need to understand why the price is like that. Like if you talk about equity, why would the price of Reliance stock be so and so? You need to study the balance sheet. Now if you say why should the price of a government security be like this, then you need to study the balance sheet of the country. And the balance sheet of the country is completely in sync with global economies. So you end up studying global economies. You end up studying uh, what the Fed Reserve is doing. You end up studying what ECB is doing. You end up studying what the Indian guys are doing. You end up studying what China is doing. You end up, you know, reading what uh, uh, maybe Turkey might have done all of a sudden. So it, it, we are no longer um, um, unaffected by global events. Yeah. So we have to ensure or we have to know what's happening across the world. The cons, um, not as glamorous as equity but it's slowly catching up. Uh, we are not as highly paid as the equity guys, so I'm always very unhappy about it. So I don't get so highly paid. I would not say that they are any kind, it's like a normal job, normal area on the finance markets. And uh, they're not that many cons because uh, coming onto the fixed income side of the markets, trust me, uh, there are so many options within it. There are so many options. A person can get lost actually because the fixed income markets is also directly connected to the forex market. They don't get as badly affected as the equity markets. Yeah. No, they don't. Fixed income markets, they don't. And another advantage on the fixed income markets is that um, currently the uh, fixed income markets is smaller than the equity markets. Second, the amount of people that come into the fixed income markets are much lesser than the ones that move towards the equity markets. So even today, it's very difficult for me to find uh, good talent on the fixed income markets. So typically people end up uh, taking freshers, training them to groom them to come up for you know uh, the uh, other jobs that they would have to do on the fixed income side. Whenever you are handling money, there's always going to be uh, sleepless nights and there's always going to be financial risk. As people really don't understand, uh, the bond markets are as risky as the equity markets. It is not that they are less risky. Uh, it's, it's only this thing is that, you know, they may not be as volatile as the equity markets, but they always have the same kind of risk. And uh, in equity, maybe the volumes can be smaller as compared to a debt market. On a debt market side, you know, since our volumes are much larger, It's more to do with a lot of experience that you sit on the markets with. But yes, uh, the people who come in with uh, who are chartered accountants or you know they have got some good uh, degrees from a good uh, business schools. So those are the ones who really move and make it to the treasuries of banks or mutual funds or insurance companies, and that helps them and allows them to be able to analyze how the market is. But that does not mean to say that people from uh, other business schools don't make it. Of course, they all make it. Certificates that are issued by uh, the National Stock Exchange and the Bombay Stock Exchange. So uh, they have particular courses. It's not exactly a one-day course or a five-day course, but exams that you have to give to clear them. So th there is one particular for debt markets. They initially have to spend at least uh, you know the first two years of their life. Uh, trying to understand the markets, trying to understand the various nuances of the market and try to understand you know, how the market works. It's a large market, it's a very large market, a lot of uh, areas into that market. So 
you need to understand which area or which part of the fixed income markets you want to specialize in you cannot do everything yeah. there's no way you got short term papers you got long term papers you got uh, uh, foreign papers you got dollar bonds you got uh, masala bonds you got hell of a lot of uh, different compartments the person when he comes in he needs to understand what area he needs to specialize in you know he would be put into that particular department and given training uh, for over a period of it, it takes at least 6 months to 9 months for the child to really understand the markets and thereafter you know over a period of 2 to 3 years uh, he really starts really understanding which area he wants to be in and starts becoming better when we get freshers in we put them through different departments through different verticals they would spend at least 15 days in each vertical uh, since they have been talking to clients for a period of one year they start developing relationships so since it's a phone based market you don't see the person so you know you you develop some very interesting relationships with people over the phone that is why i uh, always uh, you know tell people that please understand the market first be very careful uh, while you are talking to clients there is no hurry to speak quickly be clear what you are talking about yeah. and for us every call is recorded so even if uh, you know somebody says that i did not say this we can always go back play the recording out and understand you know because that that's the norm for this market that you have to record everything this area has a huge career growth let, let me be very frank i mean um once once you get into the fixed income side of the market uh, there's so many verticals that you could get into because fixed income is related to the derivative side is related to forex is related to bonds related to government securities uh, there are a lot of options that a person can really get into if he really wants to uh, explore the fixed income side of the uh, business now uh, for example the easiest way for a person to get into the fixed income side of the market is through broking houses because uh, there are a large number of broking houses in the country uh, that uh, regularly uh, you know uh, take in uh, freshers and train them and uh, mold them to uh, better jobs so that's the easiest way for them to get into the fixed income side and then from there uh, we have always seen in this market that kids who have come onto the broking house they do well those who have done very well there they get absorbed by the banks treasuries or the asset management companies or things like that so it is always said that it's easier to go via the broking house uh, not everybody gets a entry directly into the bank or directly into a uh, the treasury operations of a foreign bank or something maybe somebody who has done his iim or something of that sort who gold medalist things like that they they will get some of those kind of jobs but otherwise uh, uh, most of the other people they go through broking houses uh, and then move to the banks i would say the international degree really has no value because uh, as it is there is really not that uh, there are no such degree that specifically look to uh, you know pinpoint on fixed income side of the markets so typically what people come to us with when i have seen uh, kids coming to me is they they come with some uh, mba degree from the us or something that sort that really doesn't make any difference as far as we are concerned so we'll be more happier uh, taking kids who have done their uh, mba or their ca here because we know that they understand the indian conditions better and we are trading on indian conditions we are not going to be trading on uh, foreign bonds so as far as the fixed income markets in india goes uh, we trade only in indian government bonds and uh, indian bonds we do not trade in foreign bonds